Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing why I picked up an iPad mini and what I'm using it for. But more importantly, I'm going to share what I have noticed regarding using the iPad mini and the iPad Pro. And I have been using, I've been an iPad user on and off for about 11 years, since 2012 actually. And I've loved having an iPad, but it's never really served me as much as it serves me now. And so I've been a strict iPad user for the past maybe 14, 15, 16 months. I bought an iPad in December of 2022 and I have used it nonstop since then. But I have been using a 12.9 inch Apple iPad Pro, which is the largest iPad that there is out there. And I recently got for free because of credit card points and a bunch of stuff I've explained before an iPad mini, which is the smallest iPad that there is out there. And I am here to share with you today how I have liked using the iPad mini and some pros about the iPad mini versus the iPad pro, especially when it comes to planning. So let's go ahead and dive into today's video. So let's start with the iPad pro. One thing that I've noticed about the iPad Pro is that it is much better for multitasking. You can split your screen and when I do that, it is very helpful, especially when it comes to planning and things like that because I can open, let's say, my digital planner in Google Calendar to kind of cross-reference or see you know, what I might need to plan on one or the other. Or I can open Notion in my digital planner or my digital planner or Google Calendar and Notion. So it's much better for multitasking in a split screen. Whereas that's obviously not the case with the mini because the mini is literally half the size of the iPad Pro 12.9 inch and it's not even worth using multitasking. On the mini, I don't do it because the screen is already so small. Trying to split the screen is, I might as well just be using an iPhone if that's the, if that's the case. Another thing that I noticed about the Pro that I love is that when I put it down on a surface to plan, which is traditionally what I have done, it really feels like I am planning on a piece of paper or in a notebook or something like that because of the size of it. The Pro that I have is a 12.9 inch, the standard letter size for a piece of paper is 8.5 by 11. So it really feels like I'm just writing on paper, especially with the paper-like screen protector and the types of tips that I use for my Apple Pencil. So that's one thing that I do not have on the mini. It definitely feels like I'm just kind of planning on a phone if I'm being honest, but the Pro really makes it feel like I'm planning in a notebook or on an actual piece of paper. Another thing that I've noticed with the Pro is that I never have to zoom in to see anything or even to write typically. Normally, I can just whip out my Apple Pencil and start writing on my iPad Pro and I don't really have to do any zooming in and all of that, which is not the case on the mini because the mini is so small I oftentimes have to zoom in to be able to write so let's talk about some things that I've been loving about the mini I love that the mini is lightweight and when I say lightweight I mean that I can carry it anywhere it'll fit in any purse it'll fit in my pocket it'll probably fit in the back pocket of my jeans I'm sure it is so small so tiny and so perfect it's not quite you know an a 12.9 inch Pro or even an 11 inch or any of the other sizes of iPads, of bigger iPads, and it's not quite a phone. So it's literally the perfect size when it comes to planning. Another thing that I've noticed is not only is it lightweight, but it's actually easy to hold. So whereas I normally, I can't hold up my 12.9 inch Pro and plan on it with one hand. I can't hold it in one hand and write in the other because it's massive. So I've never been able to successfully get away with that. So the difference is with the mini is so small, so compact and it's lightweight that I can hold it in one hand and have my pencil in the next and be able to plan and write and do all the things and it not be that big of a deal. It's not something that it's literally too heavy for me to hold. The other thing that I've been loving about my mini is that it's only use if you don't know this, is for planning. So I only have a few apps installed on my mini. I have my digital planner, which is in GoodNotes. I have Notion, I have Google Calendar, and I also have the Kindle app. So I do use it strictly for planning and reading. That's it. I don't use it for scrolling, for anything else. I just use it for planning and for reading. And because of which I do like it because there are no distractions popping up. Like on my phone, there's texts and calls popping up all day long on my Pro because I use it as a laptop. There are Zoom meeting 
notifications popped up, popping up and all types of notifications popping up and it's just cluttered with a bunch of different things because like I said, I use it as a workhorse, but that's not the case with the mini. There's no distractions, no notifications. I literally just whip it out when it's time to plan or when it's time to read, which of course I probably do more planning in my life than I do reading, although I am doing more reading nowadays. So let's talk about some things that I've been loving about both. The first is the auto connect with the Apple Pencil. So if I just connect my Apple Pencil to the side of my mini, it automatically connects via Bluetooth and I can immediately start using it. If I take that pencil and that same pencil and clip it to the side of my Pro, it does the same thing and I can automatically start using it. So I do love that I don't need two pencils and that it automatically connects within like two seconds, which makes for transitioning from each device very easy. I've also been loving that GoodNotes auto syncs across both devices. So whether or all devices, really all of my iCloud devices or my Apple devices. So whether I'm on my phone, whether I'm on my iPad mini, my iPad Pro or my iMac, GoodNotes auto populates and auto syncs in the background. And so I can always see where I left off. So meaning I can open up my iPad mini and go into GoodNotes and plan out some stuff. And then I can close it, go into my iPad Pro and into GoodNotes and look at my digital planner and everything that I just wrote or planned will automatically populate in my Pro. So I've been loving the synchronizing between the two of them. Similarly, I've been loving that I can access my files on both devices. And so the only time I really need to access files when it comes to planning is when I'm trying to bring up really some of my digital planning templates that I make myself or my digital planner that I save to my files or especially stickers and other types of cute elements for digital planning. So the fact that I can go in my iPad mini and bring up all of my different files that are connected to my iCloud and go to my Pro and do the same thing means that I can plan on my Pro and on my Mini the exact same way. And the two of them are just in sync and they just work in tandem, mainly because of iCloud and all that Apple has going on, of course. So let's talk about one thing that I've noticed that is a con, if you will, for both of them. And that is for me when it comes to GoodNotes. So one thing that I noticed really quickly is that on my iPad Pro, I had certain settings within GoodNotes, like for my highlighter and my highlighter colors and my pen, diff my different pen selections and especially my fonts. And so what I learned is that I have to install the exact same fonts on both of the devices. I have to go in and I had to go in and adjust the settings so that they would mirror one another. That didn't automatically happen for me. So when it came to GoodNotes, I had to make sure that my mini replicated my pro. So therefore, when I planned on either device, whenever it was time to sync to the other device, it would look exactly the same if I had the exact same good notes settings, same highlighter choices and same um, fonts and all of that. So it made planning on, it makes planning on both devices so much easier and so much more flawless. So I've only had the iPad mini for like three weeks and those are some of my initial thoughts on digital planning on the iPad Pro versus the iPad mini. If someone asked me which one that I would prefer as of right now in this very moment for planning only, I would probably have to go with the iPad mini just for planning only. Of course, when I bought my Pro, it was not to strictly plan. I bought it as a laptop replacement so I could edit videos and do all of those types of things and use it as a laptop because it is my laptop, <laughs> but because I had it, I went ahead and started digital planning on it. But if someone asked me which one I would recommend for planning only, I would have to go with the iPad mini and it's an obvious no brainer. I don't know that it's the cheapest iPad. I would go with the cheapest iPad, the cheapest iPad that is the smallest. That is what I would go with. Okay, you guys, so that is gonna be it for today's video. If you like this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you're new and if you're liking what you're seeing. And of course, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any tips for me or anyone else, leave those down below in the comment section and I will catch you guys right back here in a few days in a brand new video. Bye guys.